What's going on everyone? It's Mr. West. I hope we're all well. So welcome to another camera test and this time it's for the iPhone XR in daylight. We've already looked at how it copes with low light video. It did really, really well. Very similar results, if not exactly the same as the iPhone XS Max. However, one thing I did notice is that the autofocus did struggle a lot in low light, which is completely different to the iPhone XS Max. So I'm not sure if they can fix that in a firmware update, but it was just something I noted and I just want to see if the same problem manifests itself in daylight. Now, as with all camera tests, all of the detailed camera specifications will be left in the description down below. And throughout the video, I'll just run through the highline specs of the cameras instead to save you guys some time. So we're currently recording in the lowest mode available for the front facing camera, and that is 720p at 30 frames per second. Don't want to spend too much time in this mode. However, if you're sort of an amateur blogger, if you just want to save space on the internal storage, then this is a great option because you still get a great image. You still get the great cinematic image stabilization that Apple offers with this phone and also that wide stereo sound recording. So moving up to 1080p at 30 frames per second, you'll see uh, a negligible difference in the quality in this mode. Now the front facing camera on the iPhone XR is a seven megapixel unit, very much like the iPhone XS and XS Max. She has exactly the same characteristics and the cinematic stabilization is probably some of the best that I've ever seen. It's really organic. It's not quite the on-rail smoothness that you get with a OnePlus 6 or 6T, for example, but I kind of like it, that kind of slightly wobbly movement, which is more natural from your footsteps. The front-facing camera uses the Apple's Smart HDR control and it automatically fixes the exposure as it goes along. You can just see the auto exposure at work there if I just tilt the camera. It automatically adjusts to compensate. But you still get a really great looking image from the front facing camera even though it's only a seven megapixel sensor now it's fixed focus so it doesn't have any auto focus trickery so it's not an essential feature you still get great focus and good detail on the main subject so now moving up to the highest mode available from the front facing camera and that is 1080p at 60 frames per second now this is a bit of a treat for front facing cameras. You get that nice smooth movement. And this is great for vlogging, especially if you've got lots of fast movement. And if you've got a boosted board or a bike, then you get that really kind of uh, dynamic, smooth look to the footage, which is really great. So in this mode, in the dark especially, you do get lower exposure, but no such problem in daylight. The only thing I've noticed is it is blowing out the clouds in terms of exposure behind me whereas if i just tilt the camera you'll see that the exposure then sorts itself out now this isn't something that was exhibited in the iphone 10s max so i don't know if there's subtle changes or some tweaks needed on the iphone 10r camera software certainly not bad but you can see obviously it's compensating for exposure on me and blowing out the sky behind me whereas if i just tilt the camera this way you can then see the sky as well. So I'll just check for detail behind us as well in this mode. And you can see just blowing up the sky, just again, whereas if I just move the camera this way, you can just see the auto exposure, just making adjustments as we move around. It's still a great image anyway. I think it looks excellent a few further tweaks from Apple in the camera software department could really add some polish and shine to the front facing camera. So we'll just go for a little jog on this freshly new tarmac ground. It was all potholes the last time I was here. And we'll just see how the image stabilization copes in this mode. So as you've probably seen there, although there's a bit of wobble in the image, it does a really good job of keeping these left and right edges of the image as stable as possible, even though there's a bit of to and fro in. It's not a jumpy mess like you may get some from other phones. The front facing camera video from the iPhone XR is absolutely superb. And at this lower price point of £750, it offers excellent bang for buck. Okay, so just like the low light video test, We'll start the rear main camera video test in 720p at 30 frames per second. Now, as I said, it's great for saving space on the 64 gigabytes of internal storage on the base model. 
Now the iPhone XR does record video in really high quality, so that internal storage space can get used up quite quickly. Now, as we know, the iPhone XR is now missing the Times2 telephoto zoom camera, so it's just a singular 12 megapixel shooter, and it shares the exact same characteristics as the iPhone XS and XS Max cameras. So let's just check on these plants here. We can just see, you now it's nice and smooth, but in the dark, this autofocus does become unstuck. However, in daylight, no such issues, which I'm really glad about. You get a really nice natural bokeh behind that image. Look at that there. It's got a really nice, smooth, progressive movement as it focuses. So it's also got what Apple's calls uh, Smart HDR. Now you can toggle that on and off in the settings. I say just leave it on and let the camera software and the A12 Bionic chip do the rest for you. All right, so moving up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. So let's just check for exposure. So you can see the exposure from the main camera is obviously a lot better. This is a bigger sensor and it's also got more technology packed in there. That tiny front sensor obviously cannot let in all of the light possible. But with this, you just get great exposure at any point, just moving the camera around. Everything is expertly handled by that sensor and that camera software, all helped along by that A12 Bionic chip, which is an absolute beast. But as far as color rendering goes, straight ahead there, the Smart HDR is adding a little bit more color and pop to the sky. The sky is more of a, a very light blue, whereas this is a slightly darker shade. Those clouds right ahead there, right in the center of the image. What I'm seeing is slightly lighter, whereas the camera is giving us a more, slightly more saturated look. One thing I do like about the iPhone XR and also the XS Max as well, is that the image has a really nice depth of feel to it. Now, some phones can kind of paint a, an almost flat image with video whereas with these these new iPhones they've got a really superb kind of almost 3D effect to the image. I'll just play a clip now where uh, I was at Ogmore Castle which is in our local area and just walking up to the castle you can just see the kind of almost uh, game like three dimensions you get from the from the image quality. But if you look here you know just looking at how it renders everything you know the contrast a dynamic range in, in the whole image is just really, really impressive. So we're starting the 1080p 60 main camera video recording with a gallop and looking at the image stabilization, absolutely rock solid, doing its best to really keep that image stable. And once again, case in point about the kind of 3D nature to the way the video recording looks. If you just look at this tall plant behind these other leaves here, you just get a really great sense of perspective from the video. It's just the way that the camera sensor just pulls in so much detail out from the image right out into the distance but just paints this great kind of parallax backdrop. Keeping everything nicely and focused at the front here, and you've got this great depth of field then behind. It just looks so awesome. See what I mean there? Just look at the, the depth of the image. Just moving around this plantation here, and then just subtle change in autofocus into the background there. And again, you can see that auto exposure and smart HDR doing its work on the fly. And with the 60 FPS video, you obviously see smoother movement. Okay, so for all you 24 FPS fans, this is 4K 24 frames per second. Now 24 FPS is only available in the 4K mode. And using this mode, you'll obviously see a slightly more motion blur effect. Uh, which is why 24 FPS is used in film and some TV shows. It gives you a slightly more cinematic quality. Now you would need to grade this footage a little bit because it obviously it looks nice and shiny in this mode. 
but you can just see moving past the car they just slightly jittery motion but that is how 24 fps works now with 24 fps this does help in low light there's a new mode which has been added in the latest ios 12.1 update and what that allows the phone to do is automatically switch to 4k at 24 frames per second in low light environments which then helps with exposure and the overall quality of the image okay so 4k at 30 frames per second now this is the last mode which supports apple's cinematic image stabilization i want to now the image stabilizer really helps with shots like this if you want to hold the rig up just so if you look there let's just look the it's incredible just the parallax effect and the way it separates those trees in front of us from the larger trees in the background get closer to these you can just see it just picks up so much detail and the HDR doing a great job of just rendering the dark and the light excellent stuff Okay, so the final camera mode, this is 4K at 60 frames per second. And in this mode, the phone now defaults to optical image stabilization. So that's where the center moves on a four axis to help keep the image stable. Now, the one thing you will notice is that looking through the viewfinder in this mode, it looks more stable than when you're doing it with the electronic cinematic stabilization. But when you actually watch the video back, it is a little bit more shaky than what you've seen in the other modes. But it's still, I mean, immensely good video. I mean, just look at this. Superb, even just moving back to where the sun is behind the clouds there. We just move over. Just not phased at all. And again, this smoother motion with 4K60, you are gonna see a few more wobbles just with optical image stabilization here. But kudos to Apple and their software engineers for creating such capable camera hardware and great video as well. And hopefully with the stereo microphone recording, it is super wide. Apple is absolutely spot on with what they say. Stereo recording with wide sound stage is very, very true, especially when you've got passing cars, but I'll just be quiet if you can hear just the ambience of just being up here, traffic in the distance. let me know what you think any questions you have and please let me know and drop them down in the comment section i'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible and if this is your first time here then please consider subscribing i'll be extremely grateful it helps out my channel and it also means you don't miss many more great camera tests and product reviews coming soon on my channel but for now my name is mr west this has been my all modes video test for the iPhone XR. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you guys later.